like right there is too close to get the whole screen. For some reason, I can't zoom back. I got a whole lot. Thank y'all for showing up on the Friday before um, uh, a much, <laughs> a much ready for a break, right? I think we were all ready for this. And so what I handed out to you is kind of what we would do in lab. Um, we're going to go over some of this stuff. I'm not necessarily expecting everyone to finish this, at least the um, stapled handout, but it has some information that we need to go over. I found in the past that this particular topic really kind of students struggle grasping it. So I'm going to set this up today and then we'll work on it again Wednesday and lab. So um, we have this particle density and this pore space. Um, again, if you think about like that sponge example that I gave you, like that's not a solid piece of material, right? So there's pore space in there. And so a bulk density is going to be like a, a, a mass per a volume area. And we typically measure that in like grams per centimeter, grams per cubic centimeter. Um, but we need to have this reference. And so the particle density is 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. If you can think about a rock, and I did not bring a rock, but if you can think about a rock that you pick up and let's say a waterfall or something, water does not move through that, right? Not very easily anyhow. And it's very heavy, kind of like a brick. But brick has a little bit of pore space in it. And so which one weighs more? A pound of brick or a pound of feathers? They weigh the same. Do they take up the same space? A pound of feathers is fairly big, but a brick is fairly small or like gold. Gold is about the size of a brick, but it's much heavier, so it's more dense. And so when the particle density for most of our rocks is going to be 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. This is zero pore space, none. Our bulk density we talked about is going to be this mass unit of a volume of a dry soil and measured in grams per cubic centimeter. Let me zoom that in a little bit. And it's also on your paper. So there are four tip, there are kind of four things that influence our bulk density. So one is pore space, our texture, which we did, like so a sandy soil would have a lower bulk density because there's more pore space. Larger pore space, maybe not more. Larger meaning like the size of the pores. More meaning the uh, number of the pores. Uh, our organic matter and then depth. And so remember we talked about that that rock that broke is going to be our particle density of 2.65 grams per cubic centimeters. As the soil above it starts to form, the density is going to decrease. All right, and so we're going to do an example. Typically what we'll do is we'll take the soil core, we'll go out, we'll pull, we'll pull a soil core, uh, we'll weigh it, uh, moist or what it is in the field and sometimes it can be you know almost fully saturated or uh, it might not be all the way dry but what we need to do is get all of the water out of it and so we'll dry that at 105 degrees celsius which is a little bit higher than boiling so greater than 212 degrees fahrenheit because we want to get all that water evaporated out of it that's why we're above 100 degrees celsius so we have taken the soil sample, we have dried it, and we have come up with the mass of the oven dried sample is 96.31 grams. Our little core, kind of like a, like a PVC pipe except it's aluminum, uh, has a volume of 61.39 grams, I mean cubic centimeters. So we have grams per cubic centimeter, so the way that you figure out the bulk density is Put the grams over the cubic centimeters, and that'll give you the bulk density. And so what do we come up with there for 
96.31 divided by 63, or 61.39. 1.569. 1.5. Statement. Our fault density, so this is DB, is 1.569. So one point, let's just make it 1.57 grams per cubic centimeter. That marker sucks. So y'all can see this too. Our fault density is 1.57 grams per cubic centimeter. And what did we say our particle, de our, our particle density was? That number stays the same every time. Particle density is 2.65 grams per, per cubic centimeter. So our bulk density right here, just our bulk density, is 1.57 grams per cubic centimeter. That's pretty good. That's probably um, a little less than half. A little more, a little more than half. All right, and so what we're gonna do is to determine that pore space is basically we're gonna take a whole rock and minus out the pore space. So this is gonna be one minus the bulk density divided by the particle density. Particle density stays the same every time. It's 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. Everyone cool with at least the bulk density part? Everybody understand we need to take the mass of the oven dry divided by the, the, the volume of the ring. Okay. Did everyone write, did everyone write that in, in their piece of paper? Like I really needed to set that bulk density thing up because when I taught it last semester, we had done the bulk density lab before we got into class. Here we're much faster in the class than we are in the lab, and so we're kind of caught up equally. But I needed to explain that bulk density part first so that you'll understand pore space. All right, so we left off talking about our um, different structures. And so then now we're moving into bulk density. And I really kind of went over this in the um, lab handout. But I think you need to fill this part in. So we have four things that affect our bulk density. It's going to be pore space. Organic matter, because that's going to like take up some of that volume. Like it holds space too, even though it might be um, broken down a lot it still takes up something. Remember, that's a leaf or a stick or a twig or um, some animal or something that is decomposed, but that skeletal structure is still kind of there. That, if we're talking about microscopic, that carbon backbone is still there somewhere. So it holds some space. 
the texture, like sand, silt, and clay, how much clay is there, how much sand, silt, um, is gonna influence our bulk density, and then the depth in the profile. And so bulk density increases as depth increases because of the pressure. So you're compacting that down. Each time we drive the tractor over that field, we are increasing the bulk density. That's why we like no-till, because there's only a couple of rows that we drive through rather than driving over every row in the field. Everyone good here? All right. Now we're gonna be talking about this pore space. So we have this soil sample, uh, we've put it into the oven, we have removed this portion, and so now whatever isn't mineral is going to take up, this is gonna be the bulk density because we don't have anything else left. There's no, there's no water making that sample heavier, it's just air. So the way that we're gonna calculate pore space Kind of the first step you should do, and you'll, you'll see this on your homework, I set it up specifically for you to find the bulk density first. So for the purposes of class, I've given you this number. On the homework, you'll need to find it. Same way we just found it just a moment ago. So step one is we need to solve this equation. I'm a little bit calculated. Okay. Okay. No, 1.57. I need you to solve this one right here. Did you solve the whole thing? That's what's up. 1.57 divided by 2.65. Going back to your handout, I know I'm jumping around you, I'm sorry. Back to the handout that we worked with plans, because we're gonna go back to that and work the mass of the acre furrow slice. This is 0.5924. Now if we multiply that times 100, well, let's not do that. So now we know that we have one minus So we solve that part of the equation. 1.28 divided by our constant of 2.65. I know I'm jumping back and forth. I'm, I'm trying to keep that equation good because we're going to go back to that and calculate mass of an acre for a slice. We're going to do some more pore space first. So 1.28 uh, divided by 2.65, 0.483. Is it right? Okay, I want to make sure. I have been known to be incorrect. So now we've solved step one, which is bulk density divided by particle density. Next, we need to solve this one minus this value. And that looks like one minus 0.0483. So our pore space is 51.7%. Because then we're gonna multiply times 100 and that's gonna be the answer. Ain't ready for guys like us. 
All right, so then the long version of this, this is the full equation from up here. I just, I tend to break it down into steps. Sometimes uh, what I run into is that I have to do parts of the calculation and I have to go back to it. And I'm not sure if I should confuse y'all any more than you might already be. But typically what I'll do is I'll do this equation first and then I'll just subtract one. It's the same thing. One minus 0.483 is the same thing as 0.483 minus one. You get the same value, it's just not negative. I just have to remember to change the negative over. When I'm working that on the test, I'm like, I'm gonna punch this number, write this number down, go back to the beginning and quit. You can do it however you like. But step one, to keep it simple, step one is I solve this part of the equation. Step two, I subtract that from one. Step three, I multiply times 100. It's a pretty straightforward calculation. And so what this is representing, what this 51.7% is representing is this portion right here, which means I've got way more minerals in this soil. If I'm thinking about it about like a pie, this is 50, I'm sorry, I have less minerals. At 51%, so this pie has kind of closed a little bit. And so the lower the bulk density, the better the root growth, probably the better the water flow. That's why we kind of plow our fields so that we can change this bulk density so we can get better root growth and water flow. Everyone following here? Cool. How about y'all work step uh, problems one and two on your own? Well, you hit that record button for me. Just, did you start it? Yeah, I already started it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did you stop it? Uh, no, but. Yeah, you didn't stop it. Three six. You're already good. My man. Right? As bulk density increases, pore space decreases. So it's one for one because it's the mineral space that's taking up that volume. Some of y'all went ahead and worked on 21.8. So we have a real high bulk density here, right? This is the, this is the largest bulk density that, we, that, that we've seen thus far. We would expect the least amount of pore space. Right. I don't think there's very much more left in here, so I'm going to go ahead and finish out the notes before we jump back over to the lab. We'll just go ahead and get the notes completed before we switch back over. So when we're forming this aggregate, we have this, uh, we're going all the way back to the rock cycle, where we have this magma that comes out from this igneous rock. It undergoes weathering and erosion, and some of those little particles will then either undergo liquefaction or they will get formed together into an aggregate. And we're talking like the little clay or the little sand particles. And as roots and um, fungi and bacteria and little microorganisms, they will begin to form around that and kind of grow around and make a little bitty aggregate or a little bitty boulder almost. And so then a little, you know, we'll continue on to move that and we'll continue to build that up and build that up. And then we finally have a little bit of a, um, a silt particle, our primary particles, the sand, silt, clay, um, and a little bit of humus, which is that decayed organic matter. And remember, this is happening over time. That's why it takes a very long time to form soil, because this is a slow process. And so what this is important for, why bulk density is important, is for the way that we manage our soils. So our soil till, is going to be that physical condition in relation to plant growth. And this really comes down to whether or not we're going to use conservation tillage or conventional tillage. What? Hayden, do y'all do? Which one do y'all do? A little bit of both, I mean. What's that? A little bit of both? Yeah. It just depends on the soil, right? Yeah. It depends on the crop? Yeah. Depends exactly. on how long it's been growing? 
every X years you say, okay, go out and till that field. Mm -hmm. We'll leave it alone for a while, but we don't need to till this field. Yeah, oversight really rough. We'll till it up and stuff like that. Just depends. It, it, it really just depends. Um, there's a real big push for no-till because we got this mm -hmm. carbon sequestration that we're trying to do and improving soil health. But at some point in time, we do kind of need to till that up or at least disturb that soil a little bit and maybe make it work because we've driven over that soil too much with a tractor. Um, this is important for our water relations um, and how well that soil holds together. And so I had a couple, I have a couple of people that are um, from my spring soil and water conservation class. This is kind of what we were talking about in the very beginning of class and catching up with that, how those aggregates are broken down. And like if we till too much, then we break down this aggregate stability and our soils erode because they're not held together. Like the end of this class, picks up the beginning of that class. You're going to go, oh, that would have made so much more sense if I had taken soils first. Um, so some of the guidelines that we're going to do, you know, we'll, this is mostly just for reference. Uh, not like this is going to be a big test question, but just to think about that we want to time our activities when it's dry. If it's wet, we're not getting, we can't get in the field. And then also if we do, we're going to tear our field up. Um, we need to think about our crop residues and how that in, um, uh, impacts our microbial populations. There's a real big push for cover crops. Uh, Y'all will likely run into that into your career because that's keeping that, this is going back to that minimizing soil disturbance and keeping your soil covered and that root system holding that soil together so that it doesn't run off. Because if we lose our soil, we're losing our nutrients. Next we have um, a little bit uh, related to uh, engineering, and this is more like, um, if any, is anybody going into building roads or houses? No? So these are the things that when we talk about the reasons, or something we look at for this engineering medium, all the way back to like the beginning of class and what soil is used for. So consistence is kind of like when I, um, when I was squeezing that ball in between my fingers, right? When we did texture, the clay was harder to crush than the sand was. So the consistence of that sand was small. The consistence of the clay is large. And that goes to consistency. Like it took more force for me to crush the clay than it did to crush the sand. And then for our cohesive soils, that'll be more than 15% clay. Uh, we have non-cohesive, collapsible. Uh, we have like a proctor's test and an unconfined compression test. Like for those who are into engineering, like civil engineering, they use this type of stuff. So they'll put this soil piece in this press and they'll see how much pressure it takes in order to um, flatten that out. You're not going to need to know these things, but if someone says, hey, if you, went, you took soils and never heard of Atterberg's limits, you can go, oh yeah, Natchez talked about that for about 10 seconds. Um, and then if you really get into it, again, none of us are going to be building this, but it's part of the book and part of the information. There's a chart that civil engineers use about which soil types and what they can be used for, not what we're doing here. All right, so we're going to go back to this worksheet from lab. What do we come up with our bulk density at? What do we come up with our pore space for this um, for this calculation? Amy, you got me. Forty point eight seven five forty point eight. If you're, I'll know that you round it differently. Than you, okay, don't worry about that. So we did one. We did this math. One minus. And what does this equal? No, you're good. You're good. I got it. I got it. And then we'll multiply all this. We'll multiply this times 100, and that 
And then the last thing that we need to talk about is this massive an acre furrow slot. And um, I did not really think that some students would use this from my last soils class, but I actually gave them a problem in my soil fertility class. And one of the students said, am I supposed to assume that the mass of an acre furrow slice is 2 million pounds? And I went, bingo. Um, so glad to see that someone is actually using this. All right. So what we think about when the mass of an acre furrow slice is First off, how big is an acre, area-wise? How many square feet? 43,560. 43,560 square feet in an acre. I am not a 3D artist. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do this. 43,560 square feet. So if you can think about a football field. A football field is about an acre. Close enough, right? So if you can think about going out to a football field with a big bulldozer, it'll probably take more than just one. And we basically <coughs> scrape the top six inches of soil off and put it on a scale. That is the mass of an acre furrow slice. Area times the depth, pick that up and put it on a scale. But we can't do that, can we? No, but what we can do is take that bulk density core and we can extrapolate that out and say the bulk density of this soil is 1.57 and we can calculate what the mass of that acre furrow slice would be. And this comes into play because if I know the mass of that acre furrow slice, um, I can also calculate the water, uh, the water content, the water holding capacity, the nutrient capacity, how many pounds of nitrogen per acre are there, given some other information that we're going to go over later in the semester. So here we are. I just walked up to this. I just walked up to this field. Um, I've done my texture. I can tell. Hey, you got a lot of clay in here, don't you? And I'm already chatting with the producer because they're paying my consultant company X hundreds of dollars per hour per acre, whatever it is and I'm giving them something back and we take some samples and we look like we know what we're doing. We go back to the lab, we do these calculations and we call them up the next day and we can give them some information about what their field is and we've only been there for a day and they think we're magicians. They're like, how did you know that? It's my job, okay? So we need the surface area of one acre, which we determined to be 43,560. are important. We took it to a six inch depth. So six inches is how many feet? A half a foot, so 0.5. Let's just say this is 0 0.5 feet. So the only thing we're missing is our bulk density. These values tend to stay the same. 62.4 pounds per cubic foot is the conversion. I could go into that math, but I'm not going to. I just know that it's 62.4. The area of an acre does not change. It is 43,560 for every acre that we encounter. So those two values are constant. Typically, and for the purposes of this class, I will only ask you to a six inch depth because that's our plow layer. That's where our nutrients are. They're in the top six inches. So this value stays the same. The only thing that we're gonna input is the bulk density. 
which is what was it, 1.57 grams per cubic centimeter. Basically, all you're going to do is multiply across the top. What y'all come up with? What was the answer for this equation? How many pounds? Yeah, I know it's a lot. When we get up to numbers like this, I want you to round to the nearest whole number. So the answer for this would be 1.57 grams per cubic centimeter. And we scrape that football field up, imaginary, we scrape that football field up and set it on a scale. That's why it's a lot. So your number should be, as bulk density increases, what happens to the mass of the acre per row slice? It gets bigger, it increases, because there's more mineral material there, right? So as bulk density decreases, what happens to the mass of the acre furrow slice? It goes down because there's not a lot of material there. So what I've asked you to do here is to get some, you'll get some practice working bulk density, and then you'll get some practice working total pore space and then you'll calculate the mass of an acre for a slice. All right? Cool. 
Hey, will you turn that off for me?